Sedation dentistry is really common with dental practices, but every once in a while I have patients who will come in and they'll tell me that they're a little bit afraid about sedation for a couple different reasons. Number one, I'll hear that people are afraid of sedation dentistry because they've heard it's dangerous. I've also heard that people are afraid of doing silly or ridiculous things when they're sedated, kind of like when you've seen on those YouTube videos. I've also had people be nervous that they'll get nauseous and want to throw up during the sedation appointment. And then the last thing is that um, patients are afraid that during their sedation appointment, they may not be able to tell me or my team if they're having any pain or discomfort. I've even had patients come into my office who've avoided dentistry for over 30 years because they are so afraid of a bad experience that they might have in the dental office. One of the reasons why I wanted to put this video together about sedation dentistry is I wanted to introduce myself and kind of break down some of those barriers or walls and fears that patients have about coming into an office for a dentist that does provide sedation dentistry. As a sedation provider, I spent the last five to six years of my life traveling all over the country, training other dentists and professionals in different methods and techniques about sedation dentistry. As a result of that experience, I also published a book that I could help get my methods and my techniques out to other dentists to provide safe, effective sedation for patients who are fearful all over the country. One of the most common questions I get from patients is, will I feel pain during the procedure? And that's a great question. One of the things that we do during a sedation appointment is we still get patients numb. We still do all of those same techniques that we do in normal dentistry. We just add sedation on it to help make the appointment more comfortable and better for our patients. So if a patient is feeling any pain or discomfort, they will communicate that to me. I will either hear it verbally from them or they'll show signs like their eyebrows might furrow or they might kind of be wincing a little bit. That's a common way for patients to communicate to me, hey, I'm having pain. At that point, we stop the procedure, get them a little bit more anesthetic or get them more comfortable, and then we go ahead and move on with the appointment. Another common question I get from patients and dentists is the question of, is twilight dentistry the same as sedation dentistry? And twilight dentistry is not really a term that we technically want to use for this level of sedation that we're performing. The level of sedation we're performing is called conscious sedation. Sedation is kind of a, a spectrum, okay? So you can be really lightly sedated and we can also take you further and make you deeply sedated. So the level that we're performing is called conscious sedation. This means that my patient can communicate to me. They can talk, they can move their arms and limbs, um, they can cough, they can breathe on their own. And this is really important because it allows me to have a good understanding of how my patient is doing during the procedure. If they need to stop, maybe use the restroom, we can do that and allow them to come back to their chair and get back into dentistry comfortably. One of the beautiful things about the way the medication works though, is that it not only relieves anxiety, but it also creates something called anterior grade amnesia which means that you forget a lot of the stuff that happens from that point we give you the medication moving forward. So even though you're conscious and you're able to communicate to me, you still have memory loss as a result of the medications. What happens if I feel pain during my sedation appointment? Or what if I start freaking out during the appointment? And those are great questions because it's a very common issue that patients will have when they have regular dental care. So when a patient is experiencing pain during a sedation appointment, a lot of times as an operator, I will see that the patient has experienced pain. I can see this by looking at their eyebrows. A lot of times if you see them bring their eyebrows together or if they start wincing, that's usually a sign to me that they're having some sort of discomfort. At that point, I usually stop and I'll ask the patient, are you having any pain or discomfort? Because we're in a level of conscious sedation, the patient can actually tell me, yes, I feel that a little bit, or, you know, I need to stop, there's too much water. In which case, we stop, we get them more numb, we get the water out, or we do whatever we need to do to help alleviate the pain. The next part of the question is, will I freak out during a sedation appointment? And that is a really common fear that people have because sometimes they freak out during their normal dental care. So if I notice that a patient is having a form of anxiety attack, a lot of times we just give them additional medication through their venous line. The medication themselves is a drug that's called anxiolysis drug. 
So this helps relieve anxiety. It also reduces a lot of those issues you might have with patients freaking out or having anxiety attacks. So when we see patients being uncomfortable, a lot of times we stop, we communicate to them what's going on, and they communicate back to us, and then we treat them appropriately. So now that we've talked about some of the fears and anxieties that people have coming into sedation appointments, let's talk about how sedation itself actually works, because this is a really important part of the sedation appointment. There's a couple of different ways you can achieve sedation. You can use oral medication, there's nasal medications, you can also do intramuscular, which means like an injection in a muscle, intravenous sedation, which is where you start uh, an IV line into the patient's venous system or a vein. The form of sedation I like the best because I know that I'm gonna have the best control of the sedation is IV or intravenous sedation. One of the really big things that I like about IV sedation or intravenous sedation is that I know that when I give that drug, it's a very short period of time for it to start working on the patient. I also know that when I wanna be done with the appointment, all I have to do is stop giving the drug and the patient will quickly become awake and alert and be comfortable again, comfortable enough to where they can literally walk out of our office. We don't let them walk out, but they are returned back to normal so that they could essentially walk out of here if they wanted to. One comment I've had from people who've had sedation in the past is that some people will say, I remembered part of my sedation appointment. Why is that? And the reason why some people remember sedation is because we do something called riding the wave of consciousness. So as the sedation appointment is going on, we kind of bring your sedation levels either deeper for painful or stimulating parts of your procedure, and then lighter for the points that aren't stimulating. Like if I wanna check your bite, I'll bring you a little bit lighter in the sedation so you can communicate to me and tell me how your teeth feel. It's at those levels of sedation where it's a little bit lighter that it's not uncommon for people to remember bits and pieces of it. Uh, once we're done with those easy procedures, we'll just take it deeper and continue on throughout the appointment. Will I do silly things or ridiculous things while I'm under sedation? And my professional and uh, personal experience with this is that no, my patients do not do silly or ridiculous things while they're under sedation. Most of my patients are actually grateful. They're very um, appreciative of what we're doing. They're very polite. And that's why I like working in this level of consciousness. We don't have those ridiculous or silly things that people do. So will patients snore during a sedation procedure? And the best way to answer that is yes, there's a good chance you may snore during the procedure. Snoring is actually just a sign that there's some muscle relaxation, not only of your airway here, but your tongue. And it's the movement of the air going through those structures that causes snoring. Snoring is not something I like during a procedure because it means that you're having a hard time getting the air going in and out of your mouth, but it, it's not uncommon. Snoring doesn't mean that you're sleeping. It just means that you're having a hard time having the air go in and out. So a lot of times when a patient starts snoring in our sedation appointment, we will do measures like adjusting their head or their airway so that that snoring discontinues. I really hope that this video helps you understand sedation dentistry a little bit better. If you or any dentist that you work with or have seen have any questions about sedation dentistry, I hope that you would feel welcome to reach out to us. You can email us or call us or make an appointment and we would love to meet with you and talk to you about sedation dentistry here at Rockstar Family Dental.